Hi everyone, it's the tiniest of Logans back with another video for you. Now, I know you're going to be getting to see a lot of these today, but at the end of the day, it is just a box opening of the RTX cards. It does show you that I've got a 2080 and a 2080 Ti, and we're going to have a look at them together as well. We can talk about some of the new ray tracing stuff, but also there's a really interesting one called DLSS. That's something I'm probably going to take a bit uh, more attention on in the not too distant future. But the NDA for the actual reviews is next week. Today, Let's have a look what I turned up in the box. Weird camera angles, ahoy today. So we've got the 2080 and the 2080 Ti. And I thought I would uh, unbox them with you together. Now I'm a little bit of a freak when it comes to the, uh, well not even the Nvidia boxing, but just packaging in general because I kept all of my old boxes and they're the old uh, cards. I have to keep the cards before anyone moans why haven't I given them to people and played games and all that sort of stuff. Uh, because we obviously have to keep pulling them out to do retesting and stuff, so I just like to put them on display. But anyway, new RTX. So G used to stand for graphics. The R now stands for ray, so ray tracing. It's going to be so, it's going to be something you're going to hear about a lot. Now you can see that it's completely fresh because it's a sample as well. It's got this weird tag on it, which I didn't want to take off. But to be well, before I showed you but it's actually tied on there as well. Anyway, so we're gonna take the uh, packaging off and it's, it's not the sort of packaging that we can particularly peel very slowly. Well, there's one of them gone. Anyway, there is a bit there. That's something that we can get all nerdy about. There's another one over here. So we'll just take the big bulk of the plastic off so that you can see. Now, one thing I will say is it weighs a ton. Now, I don't mean that in a bad way, like it's gonna start breaking motherboards, but it feels really, really um, high quality. First things first, over the old 1080 Ti's and 1080's, which I can pull off the shelf because of the magic that I had them there already. Uh, so we'll, we can put the 1080 Ti to one side and then the 1080. In fact, I think it'd be better if we had a better look at these because to be honest with you, the old design, everybody knows the old design. I kind of think about it, it looks a bit like the Batmobile. I know there was a lot of, um, uh, you could argue about that with one of the competitors car, but it's got that kind of angular sort of feel to it. Uh, single fan, window over the uh, vapor cha chamber area. In case you didn't know it, this is like the heat sink stack over here and at the bottom of it, there was a vapor chamber. Now, with this, and both the cards are pretty much exactly the same, apart from the 2080 has two of the uh, power cable things blanked off. So this is an eight pin and a six pin. The 2080 Ti is two eight pins. So we can have a look at the slow peel Ooh, of the plastic. But in all honesty, I get bored of doing that. And it's one of those things where I just keep wanting to rip it off. Now this, Obviously I've not seen it powered yet, but I'm assuming that this is still gonna light up. So that might be like a two-way mirror because the GTX on the side, you can see that it's reflecting. Um, now obviously until I power it up, I'm not gonna know whether uh, it does light up or not, but I'm gonna assume that it does. I'm also gonna hope that it might not just be green, but we never know. Other things to talk about is we know that the SLI has changed. It's the NV link now. So, but that's actually got a really nice chunky cover over the top of it and it really cleans the lines of the card up which I quite like. So backplate, big silver thick heavy aluminium backplate. You can see it's got the RTX branding on the side. It's almost got like I want to say like water channels or like the electric trace channels that you might see on like uh, like on Tron for example something like that across the top which is nice but then the aluminium folds all the way around the side and then for the first time in a long time multiple fans on a reference card. Um, now this could raise questions. Did they need extra cooling ability on this gen? Um, you can see that we've got a large heatsink area all the way down the side of the card. You can see the fins there. So there's gonna be a lot of breathing room there and around the side, because obviously two fans blowing in rather than um, the older style, which would have just blown uh, out the back. There is still some venting around the back. Other thing to notice as well, black PCI cover, so it's gonna fit in with the majority of cases. Uh, you've got a USB Type-C here, 
which is uh, an interesting addition. One, two, three display ports and a single HDMI. Obviously twin fans. Does that mean that it's going to be warm? Does that mean that they've put two fans on it so that they can keep it cooler and quieter because they'll have two fans blown on it? Don't know. It's going to be stuff that we're going to have to find out. Um, we've got some uh, Allen keys around the side. Does that mean I'm going to have to get Allen keys to completely strip this down for the main review? I've been told not to do it for this one, um, which is a bit sad. But I will ask if I'm allowed to post pictures, but I've been asked... Uh, not to strip it for the initial box opening, but it does make a lot of sense as well because I'd need to do all my thermal testing and everything beforehand before I took it apart. And it would be what I would normally do anyway, so it's something I'm happy to adhere to. But it, I, like I said, it does feel quite premium. There's a, it's not weight in a heavy sense, it's weight in a, that's a quality bit of kit sense. Now we can look at the 2080 Ti. I'm gonna quick rip the plastic off because we didn't need to flap about with it this time. Quick jizz on it. So two eight pins, like I said. Other than that, and obviously the tiny, tiny little TI additions, it looks all quite similar. One thing I am thinking about straight away though, in all honesty, is because this is all quite thick aluminium, um, and you can see how thick the aluminium is down the sides, this is already making me think that this card would look the nuts if it was painted. So paint the back plate, I don't know. Let's just say we'll stick with my normal white. Follow it all around, leave everything else standard, but just paint it white. But you could even then start to pick out the edges in uh, red if you wanted to, or if I wanted to, but you could do it any sort of color. So I am gonna need to get to grips with this and uh, sort of start to strip it really. Uh, but like I said, I'll do that in the main review. But if we were to put the two cards side by side, okay, so previous generation versus new generation. Now, I would say that I think that the fans do feel a little bit more vendor-like. It's definitely got more of an aftermarket feel to it. It almost feels a bit like uh, an XFX card to look at. Um, I'm not I'm not 100% sure whether I like the fact that they have changed it so much. But then again, we're always going to um, dislike change at first. But it's definitely going to be something that I'm going to need to get used to. I'm going to assume that you guys are going to need a little bit of time to get used to it as well. I'm just trying to show you all the different views just quickly in the background so you can get a better feel for it with it alongside the, the last gen. You can see as well where the end is closed off on this one because it's just blowing down and then out the sides. Whereas with this card, it was um, being blown air, air sucked in here and here and then exhausted out the back. So the airflow pattern is very different. Um, but yeah, it does have more of an aftermarket card sort of feel to it. This is obviously iconically in video, but maybe this is gonna be something we're just gonna to have to get used to now. It's gonna be interesting to see how they uh, roll this out with the uh, lower end cards and whether we end up with a single fan maybe on some of the uh, later ones. So like, I would assume at some point we're gonna see a 2070 and a 2060, whether it'll end up going down to those as well. Okay, so yes, it was a very quick look at the fact I have some RTX cards ready to test for next week. One thing I will say is uh, I do have other vendor cards that are on the cards to arrive as well. Just depends when they get here. Doesn't even look like it's gonna be next week. It's gonna be early next week. NDA for the full review is going to be the 19th at 2 p.m. UK time. You can expect me to have these live for you then both on the website and on the channel. Obviously, we've added some more games in, we've taken some games out as well. So we're gonna have the new Tomb Raider game uh, in there. We've got Formula One 2018, we've got Monster Hunter World going in as well. We've taken out Ashes of the Singularity and Gears of War. Gears of War's come out because it's just a pain in the bum for us to be able to keep reviewing where we've got it on so many machines because we've got we've had uh, motherboard rigs and then we've got sort of like um, uh, sort of like different CPU vendor rigs and Windows Store has just not worked well for that and we're constantly chasing our tail just trying to get it running again. So we've made a few changes. We will be adding in the games at a later date for stuff to do with RTX and DLSS as well. Now DLSS is basically a version or a new type of anti-aliasing. So with the tensor cores in the card, that's basically AI and deep learning. And essentially what's going to happen is you're going to be able to get a, uh, a type of anti-aliasing which is better than TAA, 
but with more frames per second. So the image quality will be better, but you'll get more performance. And the way that they're doing that is through the, um, uh, the tensor cores, the deep learning, it's actually going to be able to make the, um, uh, the picture better through the deep learning that it's done in the past. And because it's not being used by the graphics cores, it's the tensor cores, you get more performance. So it's a bit of a winner. It's also something I'm prob probably going to end up doing a lot of testing on over the, the coming months. So as the game starts to come out, we'll do an old TAA at 1080, 1440, 4K, and then we'll try the DLSS as well. And we'll be able to do, put some gameplay side by side so we'll be able to see whether this stuff actually works. I'm not allowed to say the numbers difference. They've given us a bit of a hint, um, but it's enough, of a, if it's enough of a boost for me to want to investigate it and go testing we're not talking a little bit it's a fairly chunky percentage it's a big double number percentage difference added on because of getting rid of TAA and then using DLSS now this is obviously going to have to get um, uh, inputted into the games because you're going to need to be able to go into your game settings and enable DLSS and that sort of thing but the ray tracing does look cool. It's obviously real time as well. And the fact it's gonna add all of these extra like epic looking shadows and uh, reflections and all that sort of stuff into the games, brilliant. But we don't know whether there's going to be a big performance loss by turning that RTX stuff on. So this is also something that we're gonna to have to test. But the DLSS basically means you're gonna get a better, better picture quality with OK without all the extra reflections and all that sort of stuff. So it's gonna clean the lines up because it's more of an AA than the, uh, the ray tracing side of things. But then adding that uh, on isn't gonna give you a performance decrease, it's gonna give you a performance increase. So you get better pictures, but with more frames per second. So that is something that I'm, at least on initial, because we had a conflab about it within video on a WebEx today, which is like an online tutorial where they teach us uh, all about the new technologies and tell us about all the new you know, like names for everything that they've got. But anyway, that was the thing for me today that made me more excited than the ray tracing. Um, mainly, uh, there's a couple of other things as well. So the ray tracing is gonna get added in October with a lot of stuff because they need a DXR update from Microsoft. So on the uh, October Windows 10 update, there's gonna be a thing called DXR, which is DirectX Ray, Ray Tracing. That's gonna get added in. And then when all the games kind of start to catch up and have the patches added, that's all gonna um, get implemented then. So we can't test the Ray Tracing properly until October. Now, this has happened in the past. Normally we get sold uh, cards because of things that are going to get advanced and developed later on. I'm gonna say it out loud, that's normally the sort of thing we give AMD grief for because they have done a lot in the past about, oh yeah, we're gonna be better at this later because of this and we're gonna be better at that later because of this. And normally with Nvidia, their stuff just works with everything that's out, but they're taking some pretty brave choices with the way that they're going with these, especially with the fact that the, the, the core map isn't just all graphics cores now. So you do get the obviously the normal CUDA cores and then you've got the, uh, the tensor cores as well. Um, and then there's a completely separate ray tracing area down the bottom as well. So there's a lot of stuff in there and it's pretty much a hybrid graphics card now. And the reason why it's hybrid is because it's not all about the graphics. You've got dedicated areas just to take care of the ray tracing. You've got dedicated areas just to take care of the deep learning. So they are kind of pushing the boundaries with this a little bit more. But I did kind of need to, I mean, you have to kind of stick it to them a little bit about, you know, we're going to be selling you all of this now, but it, you're not going to be able to use it till maybe later. But early adopters, one thing I will say is the people that take the brave choice, jump on the bandwagon and buy cards now, it does look like there's going to be a fairly hefty performance increase straight out the box. But again, we've not been given numbers because, and this is something I really, really respect Nvidia for, they've not given anyone numbers, so there's no numbers to leak. And then when the reviews go live next week, it's gonna be our jobs to talk to you guys about it, rather than them saying, oh, we're gonna be, you should get a, a, this much of an increase or that much of an increase. So that side of things, I actually wanna give them a big thumbs up for. Other things is people have been talking about pricing and there is gonna be price differences all over the place. The, the Founders Edition cards aren't going to be the like the RRP cards. There are going to be some cheaper cards, but obviously when you put better coolers on, higher overclocks, that sort of thing, 
um, that's when the price goes up. So when we see cards like the FW3 from EVGA, for example, I have one of those coming in, and like the Strix from Asus, I've got one of those coming in as well. I've also got a card from MSI. They're gonna be the cards that are gonna cost uh, a bit more because of the coolers and all that sort of stuff and nvidia have kind of taken the route where they're kind of th th these cards are going to be slightly more expensive because they've got a chunky cooler and all of that stuff on them as well so you may see those uh slightly cheaper cards come a little bit later but they'll have a more basic cooler they're probably going to be a little bit louder they're probably going to be a little bit warmer and they're also probably going to not particularly look that nice either, but it's going to depend what you guys want. It's a definitely different approach from NVIDIA, which is going to split the market between the people that are like, no, theirs must be the cheapest. They have to be the cheapest because it's a vendor card. Well, they're kind of screwing up the rule book and they're kind of chucking it out there. So we'll see how things pan out. I know there's going to be a lot of people that are going to have a lot of voices and, uh, want to, sorry, want to voice their opinions about all of this. That's what the internet's for. The comments are all underneath. If you've just found my video for one of my videos for the first time and you can hit the subscribe button and all that sort of stuff if you want, react, all of that sort of thing. Tell your mates, tell your nan, I am a bit nuts, I talk too much. Uh, but the thing is, I'm unfiltered because I don't script. There's nothing around me. There's no like stuff telling me what to say. I just try and remember it. And that's also why it's funny when I get stuff wrong. Anyway, next week, 19th, you're going to be able to see this. Have a review coming for you this weekend, which I'm not going to mention, but it's a fairly big one. Probably going to come on Sunday, hopefully, if I can get it all done in time. But these are going to be next week. There's going to be a lot of graphics cards in there. We've got a lot. Uh, well, we've got a few new games to mix in there as well. But I'm also up for you telling me stuff that you'd like me to test underneath. Tomb Raider is gonna get added when it comes out. BF5 will get added when it comes out. Uh, there was another one, uh, Far Cry, we've added Far Cry 5 in as well. Um, there was another one that I'm gonna add when it comes out as well, and I can't remember what it is. It's actually eluding me now, but we're gonna be adding all of the new stuff in. There's also gonna be a new benchmark that's gonna do uh, ray tracing as well. I don't think that comes out until October when we get that um, DXR update though. So there's lots of new stuff gonna get added. It's gonna keep me busy and it's gonna keep you with a numb bum because I talk too much. So when the next video comes up, you're gonna know that you're gonna need tea and biscuits. Get yourself comfy because it's gonna be one of those videos. Anyway, this has been the tiniest of Logans and it ended up being a much longer video because I ended up chatting too much again, didn't I? Anyway, are you excited? I am. Thank <laughs> you.